All right, let's take a look at section three that's called Creating Supportive Climates. This, uh, <laughs> so this section is based, well, let me go back. This section is based on work of Jack Gibb. Jack Gibb was a humanistic psychologist and he did a lot of work in various companies, corporations, and he was especially interested in how people work together in teams and what helps teams to function well. And in 1960, possibly 1961, he wrote an article all about what we're gonna see here in this section of the chapter. I mean, think about this. 1960, let's even say 1961, 60 years ago, he wrote this article and it was so true as, as people saw it, that it continues to be central to uh, communication, to workplace uh, interactions. So, okay, we're going to look at how we communicate that can create a defensive communication climate or a supportive communication climate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the verses, right? So the first one, uh, he's got six of them. The first one is evaluation versus description. Okay, so evaluation is basically a judgment and the description is focusing on uh, what you actually saw, okay? So, uh, observations could also be a little bit about your own feelings. So evaluation would be something like you are selfish and a description could be, I was hurt when you ate the last cookie that I was saving for myself. Right? So do you see the difference between the two of them where the description, remember this goes back to so many things that we've done. And I'm always saying, start with a description of, of what you actually observed. You ate the last cookie and that made me feel sad. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I, I should say, well, we talk about these in, in classes and students say that they see a lot of overlap between some of these. So we can discuss that when we meet in class. So the second one is control versus problem orientation. With control, you impose a solution. You turn off the TV and do the dishes, okay? Problem orientation is where you find a mutually satisfying solution. Uh, will you say something like, I know you're watching TV, but I could use some help. Can you do the dishes? And then when we're done, we can, uh, when you're, you, you wash the dishes and I'll sweep the floor. When we're done, we can both watch TV. Okay, the, the end result is the same. I mean, that you want the dishes done, but with control, you're gonna make the person feel defensive. With a problem orientation, you're much more likely to create a supportive climate. Okay, <sighs> strategy versus spontaneity. Strategy, it's really manipulation, okay? Um, and spontaneity is being honest. So <laughs> strategy would be, um, you know, do you like, uh, do you like tulips? This actually happened to me. Do you like tulips? And I said, I love them. And a friend said, good, come over to my house and help me divide them and I'll give you some. Whereas spontaneity would have been, I have a lot of tulips. Would you come over and help me divide them and I'll give some to you? Okay. This this is one of my pet peeves, I think, the, the, the being manipulated. Okay. The next, uh, number four is neutrality versus empathy. Neutrality really isn't being neutral. It's being indifferent. It's the, I don't care. And we all know empathy, uh, back from chapter, is it five? It all blurs now. Emotions. Yes. No, that was chapter eight. Um, Anyways, empathy is being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. So uh, here's a story that I always tell. We were we really had no money when my son was was a baby. And at one point we splurged and bought some expensive steaks. And my 
husband was grilling them, but he was also kept running inside to watch something on TV. And those, those steaks turned into shoe leather. And, um, you know, I, I could have, well, what do you expect when you don't pay attention? That's the neutrality. Now, obviously, I wasn't the only one upset about this. So I could have said, I know how disappointed you are that you burnt the steaks. Okay. Actually, my husband says I was, I was so angry. I actually levitated. <laughs> this is probably true. Okay. The last two, we've got superiority versus equality where superiority is really patronizing. I'm better than you. And equality is we are both worthy of respect. So superiority would be something like saying, well, that's a stupid way to do it. Where equality might might be something more like, I could see you're having problems with that. Can you can I tell you how I handled a similar situation? I mean, the person might still say no, but at least you haven't put their back up. Okay. Then uh, the last one are certainty versus provisionalism. Certainty is very dogmatic, the feeling that there's only one way to do things. And provisionalism, you're more open-minded and you realize that there could be many points of view. So certainty would, oh, oh many years ago, I had read an article that said that um, Taco Bell and a, and a bunch of other fast food places, I think McDonald's, were... Uh, refusing to okay uh people who were the migrant workers were picking the tomatoes and they these companies refused to raise the wages and i'm talking about these people make make nothing and so i said to the kids we are we're boycotting we are not going to eat at taco bell okay that's very dogmatic um and I could have said, we need to find out some more information about this story because honestly, I, you know, I'm not sure it was true. Okay. Another way to look at this certainty versus provisionalism could be, all right, you're wrong. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm certain about it. Or provisionalism might be someone tells you something and you say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know this. Tell me more. Okay, so <clears throat> we can feel very strongly about an issue, but if we use provisionalism, we are more willing to listen to the other side. On that note, there is, uh, I find it a little possibly uh, problematic, but there's a TED Talk by Sally Cohn called Let's Try Emotional Correctness. And she talks about uh, working with Sean Hannity. Full disclosure, I f do not care for him at all. So I, I have a hard time seeing her point of view. <laughs> but um, it, it's, I, I thought we could, we could watch this and then you could tell me how you, you think about this. Okay. So obviously the textbook does a much more thorough job uh, explaining this than I did, but I thought this would be a good overview. So check your understanding. What are the six different ways to create supportive climates? And what are the corresponding ways that would lead to more defensive communication? Which of these is the most difficult for you to deal with? Which is the one that when you when someone uses it with you, it really makes you defensive. I go back and forth between strategy or manipulation and certainty. I had a, co a colleague who used certainty and man, she just made me crazy. Okay, uh, section three was relatively short. So uh, I will move on to section four momentarily.